Hello, this is Bishop, and this is a test of Autopilot 2018 39.6 8377B4D. And this is the one that everybody has been waiting for. So this is the first Autopilot test video that I'm doing on the new V9 software, which comes with it a whole slew of feature updates. So we've got a lot to get through. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn onto this road, this nice multi-lane road. I'm going to turn on my autopilot. And the first thing you'll notice is the instrument cluster. Well, for one thing, we've got a view of the MCU this time, which normally we do not have. Um, I'll try to keep it as stable as possible. It's kind of an unstable rig. We'll see what we can do. It's not something that I have as like a normal permanent mount. Um, so the first thing you'll notice is the instrument cluster is different. The MCU is different. I already did a video on the MCU. I may be doing some more of those. Um, you'll also notice that as we come into this section, see if it pops up. You can see more than one lane to the either side of the car. Plus, you can also see any lanes on either side of the car, even though I'm on a local road. I can initiate a lane change on local roads, and auto steer will do it for me. Holy pro, it just did that through an intersection. Not technically the most legal thing you're supposed to do, but very impressive that it actually successfully did it through an intersection in which there weren't any lane lines. So as part of the new instrument cluster display, we have a 360 degree view around the car. The autopilot is now actually using all of the cameras that surround the car, which is awesome. We've got our new rear camera view down here, which unfortunately is stuck down here. All of the quick launch applications are only visible in the lower half of the screen. Oh, okay. We got a little panic there in that other section. I'm taking back, I took over there, re-engaging the auto steer. Here's our new quick control section. And let's watch this thing operate in traffic. So you see that pickup truck is showing up as a van-like object. We now have different icons for different vehicles. So I'd say compared to the functionality of what we had with Hardware One cars, there were still, even after all this time, and I would say overall, um, hardware two cars based on loaners that I've gotten, loaners that my friends have gotten, feedback that I've seen. There may be people who disagree with this, but I would say that hardware one cars generally are performing um, not as well necessarily as what the hardware two autopilot is capable of. There's still some feature gaps that exist for sure. And the three most conspicuous, or conspicuous um, feature gaps that I can remember were, we don't have the ability to read speed limit signs from the autopilot yet. Um, we also don't have, or we did not have, different icons for different types of cars. And we also did not have the ability to do an auto steer lane change on local roads. Uh, two of those gaps have been filled by this release. So, tap the steering wheel to get it uh, happy again. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a legal U-turn down here. So now as a result of the significant UI update and as part of a bunch of other changes, we now do have different icons for different cars. It also comes in conjunction with the enhanced blind spot detection that the car now has, as well as, sorry, I'm just waiting for these cars to go by as well as having given us um, local road lane change. That one in particular is very interesting to me um, because there are a lot of roads that don't technically qualify as highways to Tesla Autopilot. Um, for some reason, Autopilot will let you, like this, is, this road is a great example. It is not technically a highway. It is divided in some sections, not divided in other sections. It's obviously multi-lane. Um, and you'll see, if, you, if you see, the auto steer will let me set it to pretty much like whatever speed I want it, just as though it were a highway, but it's definitely not regarded as a highway. And this is something I've commented on in previous videos. Um, but it did not, before this update, allow me to do lane changes. And you can see with the new the camera-based display, it's showing lanes, three lanes off to the left from where I am. And I even saw just then the lane vision dropped out just for a moment as a car passed between me and those other lanes, which is obviously showing off like how this is being processed by the optical computing. So I'm gonna go ahead and say left. And it allows me to change it to that lane. That is so awesome. And you'll also see as I'm driving on this more heavily congested and multi-lane road than I normally do for autopilot test videos, um, the car display 
displays cars. Unfortunately, it's not quite as heavily trafficked right now, but it'll display cars three or four cars ahead, even in the adjacent lanes, which is really impressive. It's really showing off what those three forward-facing cameras are capable of doing. So I'm going to kill my calendar display because it's not that interesting to look at. Let's take a look at... Oop, got to drag that audio display all the way down. So you can see there is a, so I guess you can't see it, but it would have been visible in the view. But there's an SUV to my right, which uh, on the instrument cluster is showing up like an SUV. And there's, uh, what's behind me, another SUV which is showing up like a van. That's something that the autopilot car, or the hardware one cars did also do is, um, it did show different icons for different types of vehicles. It wasn't always 100% spot on for what type of icon you had for what type of vehicle. Usually, if it wasn't a car, it was pretty good at understanding that it was not a car. Uh, but where it would make, you know, forgivable errors would be sometimes something like a large pickup truck would be interpreted as like a box truck, for instance, or, you know, an SUV. Like, I don't know if there's a differentiation between like an SUV icon and a van icon. I haven't counted all the different types of icons that they potentially have, but yeah, look at that. You can see that car and it changed lanes actually to the outer lane. So the way that it drifted off to the right in the instrument cluster is exactly what had happened. So I'm going to go ahead once the lane line pops back up, say, please make a lane change to the right. Now, obviously there's a bit of a disappointment with this release because they did pull the automatic highway navigation and yes, okay, totally understand people being disappointed by that. I'm disappointed by that. We could cry and grumble about it. Personally, I think, you know, I'm glad that they did it this way. If that update is not, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take over for this. I could have let it try, but um, if that update is not quite ready for prime time yet, I'm glad that they pulled it so they could get the rest of these changes out because the rest of these changes are pretty significant. I'm gonna go ahead and get into the correct lane for turning left here because that one ends immediately after we turn left. So I'm perfectly happy with all of the updates that we got here, which are like fairly significant. So, I'll start down kind of our normal loop of what we typically do for one of these autopilot test videos. love this adjacent lane display. That is so cool. I'll hold the camera when we go with the bump. Okay, we're good. Yeah, a little swervy there. Now, another thing that I've noticed, and we'll see this probably in the section coming up, is if you watch the instrument cluster, so in the past, it always gave you a graphical representation of what the lanes look like, which is fine. You know, that makes total sense. Okay, it's uh, Saturday, so I'm not sure why the school zone light's flashing, but let's go ahead and honor that. No need, no reason to get a school zone ticket. It's like nobody else is paying attention to it, but it's okay, we'll do it. Um, and I think I might see some flashing lights of somebody who... No, it's just a bicycle. Oh, cool, we'll get to see a bicycle. Um, so as I was saying, so the school zone's ended, so we can just go back up to speed. Watch what happens when the lanes increase in size and change over here. Watch it on the instrument cluster. What I've noticed is the old instrument cluster display would give you something like a, a graphical approximation of like how the road was curving, where the lane lines were, but it wasn't, it, it seemed more of an interpretation, like an artistic rendering, I would say, of like, here's here's a road, here's a, so, sort of what that road looks like. Now, what, see how it flexed out like that? The new version doesn't, it, it doesn't seem to be giving you just like a, here's how wide the road is. The new version seems to be giving you a much more detailed representation of what the actual lane lines look like. So even when the lane doesn't necessarily get bigger, but when there's a little bit of a wobble in the lane line or some sort of deviation, I'm noticing that show up on the instrument cluster, which is really interesting. All right, we're gonna hang right because I want to chase that bicyclist because I want to see him on this display. <laughs> we're gonna stalk the bicycle. I don't know why my uh, navigation has popped out. It's weird. I was paying attention to the road, so I don't even know when that happened. All right, so I'm gonna drive. There he is, I see you. Hello, Mr. Bicycle. Is that even a different icon for motorcycles? I haven't seen a motorcycle yet, so I think it is. Okay, autopilot figured out. Yeah, we have not great cell phone reception in this particular area, so uh, 
not terribly surprising the maps dropped out. The um, the scrolling on the uh, MCU, so I have an MCU one car, so this is the Tegra-based chipset instead of the Intel-based chipset. The scrolling here is really smooth. I've never seen it quite that smooth before. Okay, just making sure that guy's not in front of us before we go. Good job, autopilot. I love that motion. I wish the uh, cell phone reception were capable of keeping up with it. All right, and see, I stopped car detection. Didn't have to take over. Awesome. Interesting. I don't see up oh, there. We go. Okay, other cars and that lane's not showing up. That's kind of interesting. I'm surprised that we don't see more lanes in this section. I'm taking a very different route since um, a lot of the features that they enhanced are mainly focused around the idea of. Um, seeing cars in multi-lane scenarios. So here's what I'm going to do. Let's pretend like we are going to... Uh, let's see. Drive to Boulder, Colorado. Oh, they changed the icon for the voice prompt. Interesting. Having a lot of trouble with those satellite maps, though. But I don't. I don't blame the update. I blame the awful at and cell phone reception in this area. All right. So I did previously. I want to get on the highway. I want to see what it does. So if we go to navigation. I previously came in here and I actually did turn on um, use HOV lanes. There is an HOV lane on this highway. I'm going to see if it directs me to get into it or not. Um, it is just an HOV lane. It's not a. It's not like a dedicated HOV path. It goes the exact same path that the the normal highway does. So this may be a bad example, but let's let's try it and see what happens. This will be the first time I'm actually trying this. There's all of our other new options. So in terms of actual new stuff that they've given us, the use HOV lanes is one. The, where did they put it? Autopilot, there we go. Obstacle aware acceleration. Now, I'm probably not gonna test this one <laughs> because in order to test it, I can't think of a way to do it without basically pointing my car at a solid object and flooring the accelerator pedal, which just doesn't seem like a great idea. So, you know, like automatic emergency braking, it's like, you know, if it happens and I catch it on video, great. Um, this one seems a little bit more based on inattentive drivers though, so I'm hoping it'll be less likely that I'll get into a scenario in which um, I accidentally floor it when the car is absolutely convinced that I'm gonna run into something. All right, now we're on a nice crowded highway. And yeah, I don't think it cares what lane we're in. So it's not giving me like a lane indication, um, which it would give me, uh, gotcha. Which it would give me if there's a turn coming up. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I don't live in an area where we have a ton of like HOV lanes that actually take different paths. We do going straight down I-25 in Denver and it goes in different directions depending on the time of the day. Um, that would be a great time when this would obviously show up. But in this instance, um, you know, where the HOV lane is basically just the left-hand side of this highway. I don't think it's gonna do anything special. You gonna change lanes here for me? Okay, there you go. So even though technically I don't have any people in my car, uh, HOV lane also is a, yep, get over, get over. Oops, all right, I'm taking over. So it was going a little slow and technically I didn't wanna get into it crossing the double white line sort of situation, which is illegal. Um, yeah, so the HOV lane is actually legal to use even if you're the only person in the car in Colorado with the transponder that I have, which is set to toll. So basically it's just gonna charge me like, I don't know, like 50 cents or a dollar or whatever for, for using the lane because I don't have my, the rest of my family in the car. But yeah, it seems like it's working great. Now, oh, that is interesting. Okay, so this is something that I did wanna test actually, but I didn't think of it until, until just now. Um, so notice that I can see a car to my right. I do not, however, see the lanes to my right. Um, the reason I believe for this is because the car recognizes that you're not supposed to cross a double white. That's not a legal lane change. So let's wait and see what happens when the double white turns into a dotted white line. 
and then see if the adjacent lanes on my right show up. Also, another thing that I'm noticing, and this is a problem that we used to have once the, when the adjacent lane display was first enabled, is, or specifically auto steer lane change, is I have a very wide shoulder off on my left. I am not reading that shoulder as a lane. The car used to read that shoulder as a lane, like constantly, and it made me super nervous. Okay, second then it turned from a double white to a dashed, it gave me the option of changing lanes. That is sweet. These are obvious precursors to the functionality of being able to automatically negotiate highway interchanges and exits. Um, so I think this is very impressive. This is doing really well. All right, so I think that does, so I'll go ahead and let's see about, let's take this one. Let's see what we can do about making it take an exit. It's not gonna take that one, so I'm gonna go one further. And I realized just now as I'm recording this that I forgot to use my new headset. Um, that's fine, I am actually using the old camera for the Canon Digital Elf I'm using for the MCU filming, so that's the one that has good audio quality. Alright, come on, start slowing down, please, car. <laughs> yep, there we go. Nice. So, yeah, the pieces are all just, they're starting to come together. Alright, we're not going to Boulder anymore. And I expect, based on previous behavior, this will drop down to 25 miles per hour, at which point it'll basically just roll through that intersection if I don't stop it. Yep. Alright, that's looking pretty good. Let's take a look at the options that we have. Uh, okay, so the um, the weird new icon that we have here that I mentioned in the previous video that I didn't understand what it was, that's the traffic. Um, I guess that's a stoplight, kind of? I don't I don't know what that icon's supposed to represent, but it's obviously the, uh, the traffic display. When I was playing with it previously, there was no traffic um, shown on the map, so pressing a button didn't have any effect. Light. Oh, that's all right. Okay. Yeah, so a lot of... <laughs> oh, I think that's a good point to end the video then. <laughs> okay, I'm glad that happened at a stoplight. Um, a lot of little changes here and there, um, but it, you know, it's stuff that adds up. And uh, something that, I'm since I'm stopped, still stopped at a light, something I didn't mention in the previous, I like this new... Um, Cabin con or cabin temperature controls setup. I like the fact that going into the full page does not take up the entire screen. Um, I wish that me it not taking up the entire screen meant that I can multitask it with other applications and not just the map. So like if I do call, that dismisses it. If I do camera, which I drive with the camera on all the time. So yeah, if I want to change this, I lose the camera view. Not a huge fan of that. Um, same thing goes for um, oh, that's right the um, the seat heating here the cold weather package, which is now included standard on all of the cars. Um, this is far less obtrusive than a view that used to take up the entire screen. Uh, again, though, like, I wish it didn't have to dismiss the camera. Also, you know, I kind of liked the old graphic. Like, even though it taking up the entire screen was was obnoxious, um, you know, this is a far more simplified view, and it just, just doesn't look as cool. But, yeah, overall, I think a lot of the ways that they've streamlined the UI um, are for the better. I'm going to put this down now. Um, but, yeah, I think we're good to go. So, thanks for watching, everybody.